thank you all for coming here today. Uh, appreciate it. It's a very important day for us. Um, we're here to talk about a serious issue that we're, we've been dealing with in the community, the opioid epidemic, something that's been ever present and on our minds. Um, just nationwide, the opioid epidemic is happening. 130 people are dying every day. In our region, in the state of Missouri, three people a day are dying. That's not good. This includes children of ours, our parents, aunts, uncles, our neighbors. This doesn't have a boundary. Everybody's impacted by this issue. So it's not just, it, the opioid crisis is not just heroin, it's also prescription medications like fentanyl, oxycontin, oxycodone, hydrocodone. But we have good news today about the opioid crisis because we're here to officially launch the EPIC program in Kansas City by ComCare. EPIC is engaging patients in care coordination. And this, and ComCare is made up of a community of behavioral health, community health providers. Um, and I just wanted to take a second to acknowledge, so we have the EPIC team here today. There's recovery coaches, our coordinator, engagement specialists, so we appreciate them being here. Our team is ready to engage in this issue uh, and with all of our partners. And getting to that, we have six hospitals that came out of the gate and wanted to be engaged with this issue immediately when they found out that we were gonna deploy staff to come to the emergency rooms to respond to opioid overdoses. And so I wanted to name them so that you're aware of them, but St. Luke's Hospital System in Kansas City on the Plaza and Northland North Kansas City Hospital, Excelsior Springs Medical Center, and then Truman Medical Centers, the Hospital Hill, and Lakewood locations. So we are excited that they wanted to jump out of the gate with us on this project and help address this issue. Um, as we work to streamline the steps for people who have overdosed and getting them into our treatment providers. So with us today, one of our key champions is here, Dr. Doug Burgess. He is an addiction psychiatrist, a medical director, and is also a medically assisted treatment provider. So we are glad to have him as part of the team and champion this project, and I will let him say a few words for you. All right, good afternoon. Thanks, Terry. Uh, I wanna thank ComCare and, and all of the staff members of ComCare who are here today as well to, to support us as we launch this program. Um, you know, uh, it was about a year and a half ago that the CDC announced uh, the opioid use disorder, or the opioid epidemic as, uh, as a national emergency. Um, and since that time, um, it seems like I have more and more opportunities to talk to people and explain, you know, how did we get here? What is opioid addiction? How do people become addicted to it? Um, so I want to just briefly explain, you know, when we're talking about opioids, as Terry mentioned, we're talking about medications that, that are prescribed by doctors and, and have a medical purpose and a medical use. And they're, they're very useful in, in treating pain short term. Uh, the problem is that with chronic exposure to them, uh, people develop tolerance, they need more of the medication to feel relief from their symptoms. Uh, and then when they stop taking the medications or try to reduce, oftentimes people find that they can't do that or they feel sick. They're no longer able to fulfill their obligations as parents, as, as people who are working, um, as, as brothers, sisters, family members, as, as people of our, the community. Um, and when they get there, they oftentimes feel embarrassed and confused. They don't know where to turn. And, and it's a very typical story. People will come into my, my clinic every single day and they say, you know, I've been struggling with this for over a year or two years and I've completely lost control over my life. I've gone to uh, seek help before. I've called people. I go and I, and I try and get into treatment and I, and I don't know where to turn. And unfortunately, by the time they find treatment, 
the problem has become so much, so much larger. There's a saying that a problem is never as small as the first time when you notice it. Um, and that's really true for our patients. And so this program is set up to find people when they're at their, when they're ready and at the, at the time that they need treatment. We're gonna use peer support specialists to engage people in the emergency departments so that we can provide them rapid and immediate access to evidence-based care. Uh, because people don't have to have their lives destroyed by this. People need to get into treatment. People need help. They don't need to be struggling with, with how to find access to that. And so that's the purpose of this program and why I'm so excited about this. The, the, the leadership and the hospitals that are involved that have gotten in from the beginning to, to um, address this issue and, and to, to um, uh, address this, this, this epidemic in our community, um, this, is, this is really important and something I'm really excited to be a part of. So, turn it back over to Terry. So recovery can start in the emergency room, but it can't end there. And that's really the point of EPIC, is to help transition patients to outpatient providers. And so we also have six outpatient community mental health centers that have substance use programs ready and able to assist people in caring for this issue. Um, and so I wanted to mention them so you have them by name, but we have TMC's Behavioral Health Outpatient Program. We have Tri-County Mental Health Services in the Northland. We have Comprehensive Mental Health Services in Eastern Jackson County. We have Swope Health Services and Behavioral Health Division. And we also have Rediscover Mental Health Services. And so all of Jackson County and the Northland are covered here. And then we have Heartland Center for Behavior Change substance use program here in the region. Uh, Rediscover also operates the Kansas City Assessment and Treatment Center where they're going to be part of doing medically assisted treatment inductions for Suboxone and so they're key to this program as well. And we have Jennifer Craig, the president and CEO of Rediscover Mental Health Services here to talk a little bit about the outpatient provider's role in EPIC and what they're going to be doing. Jennifer. Thank you, Terry. Um, on behalf of Rediscover and the other community behavioral health centers involved in this product, we are very honored to have the opportunity to make a difference in the lives of people and families um, struggling in the Kansas City area uh, with opioid use. Um, I think our, our opportunity here is to meet people where they're at, to take them beyond that moment of crisis that landed them in the emergency department, and through the talent of our peer recovery coaches, um, let them see that there is hope that in spite of their current struggles, um, that people have been successful at achieving recovery, and those peer coaches can help them listen to their story, hear what's happened to lead them there, and develop an individualized plan to meet their needs. That will include things like care coordination, um, accessing needed community resources, such as safe, affordable housing, um, things like vocational and ed educational resources, but also meeting their behavioral health needs through counseling, um, group therapy, also access to psychiatric services, as well as medication-assisted medication treatment. Essentially, we're there to meet them where they're at, help them rediscover their hope for their future, and um, help them be their best selves on their recovery journey. Thank you. Thanks, Jennifer. This EPIC program wouldn't be possible without the collaboration of the Missouri Hospital Association and Sean Billings, who's the Substance Use Programs Director. Uh, they have formed this important alliance in Kansas City and the region to really develop a significant strategy that's been piloted in other cities and makes a difference in the opioid crisis. And we have Mr. Billings here to speak with us today about kind of how the program got started and where we're headed. So thanks for having me. Gosh, this makes my heart smile just being here today, standing in front of you. To rewind just a little bit how we got here, 
back in November of 2015, and maybe back in July of 2015 is more accurate, we convened stakeholders in the eastern region of St. Louis out of a huge demand um, and need for community members showing up to EDs due to opioid poisoning or overdose. So we convened hospitals, local law enforcement, community mental health centers, substance use treatment providers, the faith-based community, pretty much anybody and anyone who wanted to serve community members that were largely marginalized, they didn't have insurance, and quite literally falling through the cracks. So this steering committee, they looked at the gaps, and one of the core critical pieces that were missing is that bridge from healthcare into the community. What happens to these patients once they walk out of the door? Well, I'll tell you, these patients, a lot of them struggle and they do not get squared away at the community level into treatment services and it's a huge gap. So what we did was, is we really looked at the gaps in workforce, we looked at opportunities to build infrastructure and we designed and came up and I say we and I think out of all fairness this was birthed out of behavioral health network of greater St. Louis and this epic model is predicated from a model and program in Rhode Island called Anchor ED and it is almost identical um, to our program so again I mean in a nutshell this is an ED initiated opioid overdose project where we want to bridge care from healthcare, from the hospital, into the community. Hospitals are uniquely seated and can quite literally intervene in the life trajectory of our community members. There is no question. And one of the things that I love about this model is we are taking from all of the national evidence-based practices, right? Universal screening, pharmacotherapy, also referred to as addiction medicine, medication-assisted treatment, or medication-based treatment, harm reduction strategies. We wanna make sure that lay people, all of our community members, they get overdose prevention education. We wanna make sure that everybody has naloxone. And, you know, peer recovery support, that's a huge piece of this a huge piece and then also leveraging the resources in our communities for the substance abuse treatment and then data-driven program design. It is important that we have a really good pulse on what we're doing well and what we're not doing well. And I just want to share, just because I left St. Luke's right before I came over here, I had a very good meeting with a lot of uh, professors from UMKC and they're going to basically put this model, this project in the Kansas City community under a microscope to look both from an implementation standpoint as well as an outcome perspective to see what we're doing well and what we're not and opportunities where we can improve. And it's so important because we're talking about lives, right? I mean, we're not selling fast food. We are handling very fragile lives in our hands. And it's important we do everything in our power to bridge that care. So I'm tickled to be here. I love to support this project. I fully believe in it. So far, we've got St. Louis that kicked off in December of 2016 to date. They've served 3,100 and roughly 50 patients in the St. Louis region. We kicked off in Columbia in the central region uh, March 21st or 28th. And then we recently kicked off here in the western region. And it started off slow in the eastern region as well in St. Louis. So, you know, I know we've only gotten a couple of referrals yet, but just wait. You know, you build it and they will come. And it's just, it's going to take time to educate. So I'm very thankful. Um, and I really want to give accolades to all of our hospital partners and the faith-based community, our CMHCs, the community mental health centers, the substance use treatment providers, the faith-based community, and pretty much anybody who wants to help serve um, you know, folks, our neighbors, our family members who suffer from opioid use disorder. This is very real, and anything that we can do to lend a hand, um, I think we need to step up to the plate. Also, this regional effort for EPIC KC would not be possible without the leadership and guidance of the Missouri Department of Mental Health. They are underwriting, they sought after, received funds from SAMHSA, and are also financially underwriting this program launch. Um, so the hiring of the six certified peer recovery coaches, the, the manager, the engagement specialist, so the whole team that's ready to be deployed to help anybody with the op opioid overdose issues in the emergency rooms and onboarding them into the outpatient providers. 
With us today, we have Tim Rudder, who's the state opioid coordinator. And I wanted to invite him up uh, to say a few things with the Missouri Department of Mental Health. Yes, thank you, Terry. Thank you for everybody that uh, spoke. I do want to just say a big thank you to all of our Kansas City area providers. Um, it's, I know it's, a, it's been a big lift to implement uh, not just this project, but our kind of medication first model and approach for opioid use disorder. Uh, we have some amazing champions in your area, uh, many are here today. Um, you know, this project really offers a chance for someone, you know, a survivor of an overdose event to um, have an interaction with a peer, you know, hopefully get into treatment, you know, at best. And, you know, at a minimum, if they're not wanting treatment that day, they had an interaction with a peer and medical staff that showed them love, showed them empathy, and ultimately showed them that hope for recovery, you know, which is a beautiful thing. Um, and I really do want to thank the um, Missouri Hospital Association, specifically Mr. Sean Billings. He's just been instrumental um, in all of this. He's just driven by uh, passion, passion, you know, his love and his empathy for uh, the citizens of Missouri and wanting to help. And, you know, he's really assisted us in implementing this model, replicating it across the state. Um, and I know that, you know, with his efforts and efforts of our leaders within our agencies, um, we'll have lasting, uh, a lasting legacy that will support citizens of Missouri for a very long time. So it's really neat. So thank you, Sean. Um, and also, um, what's the other thing I wanted to hit on? Um, yeah, just a special note to also our, our legislators who did fund this project. We did start this under federal grants. Um, from SAMHSA, that was how we were able to support the project in St. Louis, and because that was just so hugely successful um, and having great outcomes with that, uh, we were able to make a request to our uh, state legislators to replicate this model across the state, and um, it was across the board. Everybody saw the, um, the efficacy of it and the, the benefit of it, and they said absolutely, and um, so that's what we've been doing this whole year is trying to replicate this model across the state. So yeah, I wanted to send a big thanks to them and um, all the champions that um, are in this field helping to set up systems that'll uh, last a long time. So, thanks. so thank you to everyone who's a part, been a part of launching this project. Over 15 organizations, the Recovery Coalition. There are a lot of people here that wanna help on board people that want help and access to treatment and care um, get it. So we need your help though. We need to spread the word. We need the community to know that there is a crisis happening with opioids and that there is hope for those people that are living with the struggle and the, the harm that it causes in our communities. So spread the word, treatment works. Recovery matters and help is here. Uh, thank you all for being here today. We appreciate it. Everyone that has spoke will be available for questions if you have any. And thank you to everybody that's here. Have a good afternoon.